he twisted his arm to make him, he was coming along today and I was like, you know you really want to stand and talk to an audience of 70 people, but you did an excellent job, thank you very much. Right, um, I'm Nikki Fair, I'm one of the vets on the Dairy Co Extension team. Um, I'm actually delivering this presentation, which has pretty much been written by Jamie Robertson, uh, but unfortunately Jamie would love to be been here, but he hasn't been able to um, make it long. Um, so I am presenting sort of Jamie's work, but I kind of I do agree very strongly with the way Jamie talks about the environment, and those of you that heard him speak know he's incredibly passionate about this topic. Right, so before I start actually talking about buildings, we need to actually look at what the calf needs from its environment to stay healthy and growing, because that's really what matters. What does that calf need? So the first really important point there is what they call the lower critical temperature. This is the temperature below which the calf has to start putting energy into keeping warm. So from the food we give that animal, it's obviously going to put a little bit into pumping its blood round, making its liver work, it's sort of maintenance energy. But then any extra energy should be going into growth. But if the temperature falls below the lower critical temperature, that extra growth energy goes into keeping them warm. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the factors that affect this lower critical temperature in a little while. And then some other really important things we need to think about when it comes to design are moisture, fresh air and air speed, as well as the ever-present you know, need for good hygiene. And none of what I've said is rocket science. You know, it's just good animal husbandry to keep animals clean, dry, out of a draft and in enough fresh air. But if we've known this for generations, why are we not getting it right? But I kind of guess that's what we're here to discuss today. So, now, some of these are Jamie's slides, which I've had to get some explanation on. This is quite a common thing, you know, we've just talked about what the calf needs from its building design. But we often end up building a building that round our needs and designs, and then expecting the calves to do well in it. You know, for example, with this building, it's obviously been built, you know, to match up with the existing one. They've gone to the effort of put, like, a, a, a wind-breaking product <laughs> up there to try and control airspeed, but left a big gap under the door. So you're going to end up filtering air in at quite a high speed, right at calf level. So probably not the best thing for the calf in there. And this was kind of the theme of Jamie's presentation to BCBA in 2011. It was sort of saying that we are going to expect some degree of thermal stress in calves in a UK winter, you know, particularly in the younger calves, particularly when we've got poor thermal dynamics in a building and we've got only a small amount of heat being produced by these animals. But We've got, we've got quite a few issues out there, potentially. But that also means we've got a huge potential to make improvements. So I think that's something we really need to focus on today of what we can try and do. Now, this table is full of numbers. Um, but if we just focus in on this one line here. So we're going to take a 100 kilo heifer. Um, she's eating a reasonably digestible diet. And she's growing at half a kilo a day. So. In an airspeed of 0.5 metres per second, her lower critical temperature is 10. So if the temperature drops below 10, she has to start putting energy into keeping herself warm. But then if we put her into a bit of a draft, so 2 metres per second, and that's actually not that quick, you know, that's barely walking pace really, her lower critical temperature becomes 19. Then if we take the same animal at 0.5 metres per second, but put on a damp bed, her lower critical temperature is 16. So really the message from this is air speed, high air speed and damp increase the animal's lower critical temperature. Now anyone who grew up in a leaking farmhouse like I did or lived in mouldy student accommodation knows that damp makes a building feel colder. And when you look at some of the energy that it takes to evaporate that bit of water that's been spilt on the floor when cleaning buckets, it takes 3.4 hours of calf heat, the energy that calf is generating, to evaporate one litre of water. So that really starts to put some figures onto what this moisture here is pulling out of the environment. So we know that animals are going to produce a fair bit of moisture. How can we try and minimise its effect? You know, Adequate drainage, maintaining dry bedding, 
You know, this farm in this example picture here is having big problems with this building. So he's just put some concrete down so it's easy to clean, but also he's put a drain in so the water is going to run out of the building. So we've got the water the animal is producing itself, but there's a lot of times when we see it that people are actually adding extra water to their environment. You know, leaking drinker systems, gutters, downpipes that have become knocked by a tractor and damaged. Even buildings that are just set up wrong, so water is pretty much flowing through a calf shed. And it sounds common sense, but you do see this out and about far too often. Now, that's a nice little graph which just shows how well bugs are surviving in different amounts of fresh air. So, when you've got 100% fresh air, they are not surviving as well as they do when you have them in only 50% fresh air. So, really, this just backs up that idea that the more fresh air we can get into a calf's environment, the less bugs that are going to be surviving in there. Now, smoke bombs are a really simple way of just demonstrating where the air is coming from and where it's going to. But if you are going to try and do this, make sure you've got calves in the building because you need the heat being generated. And also, don't go for just the really ch there's, there's cheaper, cheerful ones that have only got like a one minute burn time on them because you're going to struggle to get enough smoke to really fill a large space. You really need one that's going to burn for sort of four or five minutes. And I think talking to one of my colleagues that bought some recently, I think he paid about £25 for 10 of the larger ones. But still, that's a pretty cheap sort of diagnostic test to give you some really good idea of what's going on in your buildings. Now, this is something else that crops up time and time again. Calves that have been placed into a building which has clearly not been designed for them. You've only got a very small amount of heat being produced by these calves into a very large volume of air you're never going to get a stack effect working in a building like that. When it comes to get a build, getting a building working right for you, it really isn't rocket science. You know, do the sums, particularly when it comes to outlets, get them right. I mean, upstands like this can work really well on calf buildings, whereas when you look at these cranked ridges here, they are just completely inadequate. They're barely providing 20% of the outlet space you need. But the amount of new sheds you see going up with these on them is just ridiculous. When you're driving on the road and you see them, I would like to ban the production of these, to be quite honest, if I had my way. So if you're looking where to get all these numbers and how to do the sums, you know, lucky for you, Dairy Co. Housing Best Practice Guide. If you've not got a copy of this, please have a word with one of us that's got a big D dot on our um, shirt and we will get you one sent out because all the information that is needed is in there, really. So I'm going to come back to another table, slightly less numbers this time, just looking at the effects of air speed. You know, if we take our one-month calf, 50 kilos, air speed of 0.2 this time, lower critical temperature of zero. Up that to two metres per second air speed, plus nine degrees. So, you know, think about what the actual temperature is going to be in the UK a lot of the time. We are going to get some degree of thermal stress going on. Now, controlling air speed, there's always this balance of getting fresh air in, but not too high air speed. And there are some cost effective methods, you know, looking at some of these wind breaking products, there's lots of different types available out there. There are options to be looking at. Should we be looking at kind of keep calves warm in these big buildings? Could we be looking at putting kennels in there? That's one idea. Should we be thinking about how we're going to insulate these buildings? So, for example, here they've put wood onto the, uh, onto the tin roof so that the heat that these are producing is going into making the air circulate around this building rather than being lost to the tin roof. <coughs> Some other possible ideas, add a bit of energy to the environment. Now, this was some tr recent field work, trial work that's been done in the UK looking at milk-fed calves. Um, and they basically went along. Every other pen had a heat lamp on that came on at the thermostat when it went below 5 degrees. And for the, I've had to write all the numbers down because I can't remember. They showed a 15% um, ga extra gain in live weight with the calves that had the heat lamps on them. So should we be providing a bit more heat to them? Or should we be looking at conserving energy? You know, this was another study that's been done recently of putting jackets onto every other calf going down the, uh, down the line. And these showed a 20% increase in live weight gain. So are these things we should be thinking about a bit more? And then hygiene. 
it's something we can't forget when we're looking at this. It is absolutely crucial that all car facilities can be cleansed and disinfected. And having that opportunity to rest a building if possible, you know, these are really important things. And I don't think we can, uh, you know, making sure everything can be cleaned is something we can't forget when we're looking at ha designing an environment. Good job, one my last sort of slide. Um, and high stocking densities, they are a massive risk to health, performance and your profits. And things like car patches, they're simple, they really do work and can just help take the pressure off a tight system. So really, design needs, it's looking about what the calf really needs. They don't care how shiny and new their building is as long as it meets their needs. So lower critical temperature, thermal dynamics, controlling moisture, fresh air and air speed. There we go. I, I try and answer the questions, but like I say, I am not a very tall Aberdonian man, so I can't. Any questions for...